It's episode 99 of the franchise. I'm your host, DDD, Daniel Ehrenberg, celebrating one year of sobriety. <laughs> Go ahead. Congratulations, DDDDD. Yeah. And over here, this is H Man. H Man, the H Bomb. The H Bomb. Welcome to 99. And yeah. uh, 999, as who's Herman your, Cain would who's say. Who's your favorite Marvel character that starts with the letter H, Henry? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Who's it going to be? Is it the um, little weird little 50s help. mobster Spider-Man villain Hammerhead? It would be Hulk. Oh, right, Hulk. <laughs> Why did I think of Hammerhead before Hulk? <laughs> I know who you meant, too. Yeah. 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 He's got a flat head. That's right. Like that fella from uh, Dick Tracy. <laughs> That's right. Flat top. Flat top. Yeah. Now, who's the best D character? That's the question. D character? Yeah. DC? Oh, probably Daredevil, right? Oh, fuck <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Hank, we're th- the reason we're uh, talking meaningless shit about the Avengers is because we spent too much time with nerds this week online (laughs) to see Avengers Infinity War, the latest Marvel Studios release. Oh, yeah. Um, I didn't didn't wait in line at all. I walked right in. I kind of did, too, but then I had a bad situation. Listen, if anything put me off going to the movie theaters ever... It was seeing Avengers Infinity War in theaters. Oh, I had bad. a bad experience, baby. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I had my best experience in a very long time. Okay. Seating well, wise, and I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking about like seating wise, and everything just clicked. So we'll talk I, about I, I it in a lucky. second. Yeah, I got lucky. Hey, we're uh, we're we're here. It came out uh, April 27th here. Yeah, I uh, saw it Thursday night. I saw it Friday afternoon at 3.50 p.m. Okay. All right. All right. A budget of somewhere between $300 and $400 million. <laughs> <laughs> We're not down that down yet. Not out of control at all. No. no. Uh, no but no, no, who no. cares? It doesn't matter. It's already made 284.5. Yeah. It's only been out two days. Um, so. It's currently on track to be the second biggest opening in film history. Wow. After The Force Awakens. Wow. Uh, so this baby is, uh, I mean, everyone knew it would be a hit, and hey, it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what we're doing here is we're bringing all the Marvel characters together in one movie, except for Paul Rudd and Jeremy Renner for some reason. Correct. What's going on there? I'll say this. I didn't even think about Hawkeye. <laughs> Same once. here, by the way, which is crazy. Like it I, is crazy. I, I, th- I noticed Paul Rudd's absence because I wanted I com- to see. I Ant-Man very much in this noticed movie. his absence. But I, yeah, uh, we just watched the first two Avengers movies, and yep. I did not notice Hawkeye was not in this movie Neither until someone I. said it on Twitter. I, I, well, uh, yeah, someone says it in the movie, and then even then I was like, oh, okay. He'll and probably then show up later. I never thought about it again. But he never did. Yeah. And I never thought about it again. And But but Ant-Man, I, I definitely was like, oh, this is I would be nice. Yeah, I don't know what that was well, about. Well, I know they're f- they were filming there Ant-Man and the Wasp, which comes out right. over the summer. So that's probably why. But uh... And hey, before we go too far... In this episode, I want yeah. I want to say it right here. I, this movie's only been out for a couple days. Right. Uh, we're going to be spoiling the shit out of it. Yeah, it's true, folks. Okay, so, so like, if yeah. you haven't seen it and you don't want to be later. spoiled, don't listen to this episode. Turn it off right now. Yeah, just tune in later. Tune yeah. in when you see it. Yeah, Check it out yeah. when, when you get a chance. Um, Anthony Russo and Joe Russo, the Russo brothers, they're back uh, to direct. They This is their first Avengers movie they directed, kind of. But um, they previously worked in the Marvel Universe doing uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War. Yep. Um, and uh, they're directing here from a screenplay by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. Uh, the writing team, uh, they got their start... Um, over there with the Narnia movies. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and okay. and uh, they've been working for the MCU since uh, I think Thor: The Dark World. Oh, all right. Okay. They've been around a while though. They've written a bunch of them. They even created the Agent Carter TV show. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, they're all right. Listen, <laughs> they're uh, th- these are it's a workman like movie. And that's why we're getting these guys, because this movie cannot have a sense of style. It, it, it would be very hard. No, this is like an, the ultimate Marvel movie. So it it is ultimately the Marvel house style. Sure. And um, the right. whole the whole Meaning movie. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, it's just here, you know, all their big heroes battling fucking thanos right we're not gonna get we're not hiring like a ryan coogler or a no. Kenneth branagh or or a john favreau we were yeah john i mean the russo brothers are good at sort of mimicking other styles they got their start doing some pretty heady comedy they were tv directors for a long time they were the head directors on arrested development all the way back oh. in the day yeah and yeah, oh, that wasn't a knock, by the way. I just was backing up what you said. No, 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 I, I didn't yeah. take it as a knock. Yeah, it wasn't time to hire uh, an artiste. No, no, it wasn't. Right, I, right, and right. that's what I'm saying. Like, and then right. they, they were the head directors on Community, a show that notably changed tone and style and feel from week to week. And so they're good at sort of managing that to the point where... There are times in this movie where, like, f- for these couple of scenes, we're going to be doing James Gunn style Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And they can yeah. mimic that pretty okay. And yeah. then, uh, for there's a couple scenes where we're doing, like, Taika Waititi, Thor Ragnarok style shit. And there's a couple right. of scenes that are Black Panther y. Correct. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, the Russo brothers are just hired here to put out Marvel the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, are we going to be doing our ranking of Marvel movies at the end of our review of Infinity War or before? That's up to you. I don't care. Um, okay. And should I mention to our audience that I, I had promised that I needed to watch Thor Ragnarok, and I did. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. So I should probably say what I thought of that before we get into this real quick. Um, so do you want or- to do the rankings now? Um. Yeah, why not? All right, who why, gives a why shit? Not? It's a spoiler should alert we, for Infinity should War. Should we do but... the 2017 at the end? Uh, well, you know what? Let's do, but let's do the let's do both lists. Let's do right some now. lists now, and then we'll get into Avengers: Infinity War. Okay? Yeah, I think that's a, a good idea. Fine uh, by so me. What list do you want to do first? Uh, listen, we thanked we we promised our audience we'd finally do our definitive. 2017 lists. Let's do it. Okay, hold on. There's a theme song that uh, <laughs> somebody uh, somebody submitted. Uh, top ten movies of 2017 of 2017. It's the top ten movies in Daniel and Henry's opinion, which is correct. <clears throat> Henry, that's a, so that's yeah. a that's a theme we can never use again because you specifically say 2017. That's right. Okay. That was that was also Mozart's 40th Symphony. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to need to hear it one more time after we do the list. Th- that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here they are, the top 10 movies of 2017, a very strong year. Uh, I- I'll throw out a couple that didn't quite make the list. Yeah, I, I had a few too. Here's, a few here's some good movies. Logan, Baby Driver, Wind River, The Disaster Artist, Mudbound, and Call Me By Your Name. Some some fine films, not on my list. Yeah, um, Mudbound didn't make my list. Wind River didn't make my list. Uh, Thumper didn't make my list. Good Time didn't make my list. But, yeah, that uh, didn't make my list either. But I liked all of those <laughs> lists. <laughs> good, you didn't like Good Time at all, right? Wasn't into it. Yeah. Okay. What's your number 10 movie? Number 10 movie of 2017 is Mother. Ooh, Mother. Darren Aronofsky. Yes. Um, My number 10. You know, I just rewatched Persona by Ingmar Bergman. Of course you did. 
And uh, boy, Darren Aronofsky's watched that movie. I'm just oh, saying. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number 10, I have here I, Tanya. Ah, yeah. Didn't make my list, but it was a, I loved it. Big, big contender. That was tough. Mm. Number nine, um, one of Dan's favorite movies of last year, uh, T2, Train Spotting 2. Oh, God, that made the list. I had a Wind River and. Uh, Look, my list, is a mix- my list is a mixture of affection, uh, objectivity, and pure greatness. So, what See, you my- said in the theme song, our opinions, which are correct, is completely right. wrong. It was a little bit of a fib. Okay, yeah. okay. But like, for instance, Mother, I have no affection for that movie, but it's it's <laughs> I phenomenal. Do. It I don't. It's phenomenal, and I cannot diminish its importance by leaving it off off my list. So okay, it's there. My number nine is Mother. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, my number eight is the phenomenal documentary Icarus. Oh, didn't it win the Oscar? Am I wrong? I. I don't remember it was nominated i don't remember if it won but i saw it before that i, okay. I don't remember I'll, i can look that up but whatever yeah my, my number eight. eight is the uh the great brigsby bear okay interesting never saw it um my number seven is logan oh really logan that high interesting yeah, I it's been like a year since I saw it. I only saw it once, but I did not it was one of those ones I did not want to just leave in the vault and kind of dismiss. It was great. Great movie, yeah. yeah. Number 7, it's well, I'll give you a hint, Henry. Okay. It's a ghost story. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a uh, ghost story? Yeah. Oh, all right. That was a stab. Okay, didn't see it. Mm-hmm. I remember you liking that a lot. Great one. Number six, another one of your faves from last year, uh, but I think you'll be surprised how low it is on my list as is number six, uh, Dunkirk. I am surprised. I really thought that was going to be like number two or three. Yeah, no. Uh, number six here, I have The Killing of a Sacred Deer. Oh, yeah. I liked it. Nowhere near my top ten. Okay. Number five, Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my number five... And by the way, I forgot about this movie and had to uh, throw it back on very quickly before we started recording. Yeah, it happens. Uh huh. My number five is Stronger. Oh, the Jake Gyllenhaal thing. Yeah, David Gordon Green. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. My number four movie of last year is Get Out. Okay. My number four, and I'm. I think this is where we're getting masterpieces. My top four. I wouldn't change a single frame of any of these four movies. Neither would I. Okay. Ooh, except for one tiny little ghost blowjob in my number four, <laughs> Lady Bird. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Haven't seen it. Um, <clears throat> my number three is something I don't think you've seen, but it's another documentary that was on National Geographic, but it was theatrically released. So and it's it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen documentary wise uh it's called la 92 oh you know i wanted to see that it is phenomenal i heard great things yeah la 92 number three sure you had the riots you had oh no oj was 94 is that right right what else was 92 the riots yeah rodney rodney king King, sure yeah it's phenomenal all right uh my number three is a film henry didn't like that much the florida project Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it, but yeah, nowhere near my list. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number two, a movie Dan didn't see, but I bet you a million bucks he will just because he's my friend. Uh, Hostile. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, listen, it just became available um, on one of my illegal sites, so I'm going to watch it. <laughs> Good. Yeah, phenomenal. I can't wait to see it again. I want to own it. Hostels. Okay. Yeah. My number two. And listen, my impulse was to put it lower on the list, mm. but I'm not going to be sitting here putting shit lower on the list just because it's a genre film. This is a perfect movie. I, I watched it three times this year just simply because I kept wanting to watch it. And there's something to be said for that. It's Get Out. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Yeah, good call. 
<laughs> and the number one movie of 2019. Uh, Phantom, Phantom Thread, Phantom Thread. Yeah, Phantom Thread. <laughs> <laughs> the Phantom Thread, everyone. Yes. It's just Phantom Threads. It's just Phantom Threads. Stop Phantom Thread. throwing Actually, a I wrote, thumb I just, there. I wrote just Phantom Threads, so I don't know what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, undeniably. The great Paul Thomas Anderson does it again. He everybody. does it again, ladies I mean, and gentlemen. It's just unbelievable. It's on a different plateau of the other movies. I'm sorry. Uh, when I saw it, it was almost annoying because I knew there was nothing that was going to supplant it. No, but uh, I mean, we say that like he does it again all the time, but I genuinely think this is his best movie since There Will Be Blood. And that's a big thing. Because in the intervening years, he made <clears throat> The Master, which I right. think is like a masterpiece. Right. Uh, I, I, I've thought about that, and you could be right on that. I mean, I, I think I had put The Master ahead of it, but there's easily, I think I could easily put Phantom Thread as his best movie since There Will Be Blood as well. So, And I enjoyed it more on the first viewing than I did There Will Be Blood. Oh, have you seen Phantom Thread? Oh, oh I no, see no. I'm just saying, like, th there will be blood. I thought was great, and then I didn't see it really as like a fucking one of the best movies ever until oh, the really? second time I watched it. Uh, yeah, yeah, not me. I, both were a very similar experience. There will be blood, probably more of an impact, but this one, not to diminish its impact. So, yeah, those are here. You go. Those are top ten uh, movies of uh, 2017. I can play that again for you. I'd love to hear it. And I know that you know uh, classical music, so listen for the uh, you know the hint of Mozart. Okay, I'm ready. It's the top ten movies of twenty. Wait, I'm sorry. That is, <laughs> I was wrong. That's the Brahms. Oh boy. The the Mozart's later. Okay. This is this is Brahms uh, variations on his first piano concerto. I was feeling a very highfalutin today. I guess. All right, here we go. It's the top ten movies of 2017, of 2017. It's the top ten movies, in Daniel and Henry's opinion, which is correct. <laughs> I think the melody on some of your other themes is better. Well, they're original. This was not original. That's what I I'm thought. saying. I think I'm you're better than Brahms. I, I'm better than Brahms, yeah. I've been told that before. Yeah. Uh, it's not Brahms the couldn't pull off the AFI theme. <laughs> Or the, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I just wanted to experiment. You know, okay. I want to try. I, I like, to, like it. Yeah, don't worry. The next time after, well, there's one more theme song this episode. That's also it's a Mozart thing. But uh, don't worry, we'll get back to to the simpler the simpler age where I'm still better than Brahms. Uh, and they're just you know they're just me. Okay, but, uh, let's celebrate ten years. Of Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, here we go. With all 19 movies ranked. Now, of course, this should tell you a little something about um, our opinions on Infinity War, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Yeah. But, but let's do it. Uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, they've never made an out and out bad movie. It's, it's fucking impressive. They've somehow managed to start with Iron Man in 2008 and now in fucking. 2018 just 10 years later i'm uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars worth of people are going to see a movie about like the guardians of the galaxy trying Very to rest true. to the infinity gauntlet away from <laughs> thanos that's crazy it, it is crazy i'd be one of those people because i would never probably have gone to see a movie independently called guardians of the galaxy wouldn't have given a shit but yeah uh, here's the Marvel ranking theme. It's the Marvel rankings right now. It's the Marvel rankings right now. It's all 19 movies. It's all 19 movies ranked from worst to best, worst to best. It's the <laughs> correct way to do it. Oh, okay. we're, doing, we're going worst to best then, huh? Uh, that's what the theme song is. <laughs> oh, well, we got to do it then. Yeah, I think I think that's the rule. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is you go first? Oh, I'm going first. I always go first, and I went first on top ten. You go first. Okay, the worst <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, the nineteenth <laughs> best. Yes, is uh, Thor: The Dark World. Okay. All right. For me, uh, the nineteenth best is Iron Man Three. 
That's crazy. You <laughs> underrate that movie. I, 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 it's not a hindsight view. We watched it not too long ago again, and it is my, you know, probably my least favorite. Okay. It's got, it's, you know, too much of a, a sense of style and a personal <laughs> view. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shane, yeah, 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 Shane Black. That's yeah. all you care about. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Number 18. Mm hmm. Listen. Captain America, the first Avenger. That's my 18. That's crazy. Listen, that movie, I'm willing to rewatch. I've only ever seen it once. And uh, and most of these movies I've only ever seen once. It's It's gotten a critical reevaluation in recent years. Really? Yeah, people like that movie now. And, uh, you know, I, don't, I just, I'm not a Joe Johnston guy. <laughs> I have to say that I uh, probably 17 of the 19 I would always watch again, but those bottom two I just don't really ever care to see again. I'll but, see Iron Man 3 again. Get out of here. I don't care. All right, so we agree on 18. That's funny. Yeah. All right, what's your 17? Number 17. Now, listen, we were talking about this before the yeah. podcast. It's amazing how how solid the Marvel movies have been. Like, There's a lot of like just good ones right but they are good so like the seven my number 17 out of 19 is a movie i saw and enjoyed i know same thing here man okay same thing here so my number 17 is guardians of the galaxy volume 2 Ooh. okay that's interesting i but it's yeah my at the okay my number 17 is thor 2 the dark world yeah okay my number 16, and uh, maybe it could have been higher under, say, Edgar Wright. It's Ant-Man. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Um, my number 16, uh, this will probably r- give rancor to Dan, but my number 16 movie is Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> That's so low. Uh, no, no. <gasps> hey, it's ahead of three other movies, and I liked it. But like you said, yeah. I did not feel like that about that movie like you did. So. I, I do think Spider-Man Homecoming is the Marvel movie most tailored to my particular tastes. Well put. Yeah. Well said. And yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, my number 15, and this might give you some rancor. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's The Incredible Hulk. Okay. Yeah. That's too bad. It's a good movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, I uh, it's one of my favorites, so we, I won't say where it is on my list yet. But um, I knew it would be high. I knew it would be like eight, the lowest. Yeah, <laughs> and, the- and and that one's kind of tailored to my tastes. It, it's kind of just like a simple chase movie. It, it's yeah. you want a bone, live Tyler. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. You got William Hurt. Oh, and I never gave up. my Thor Ragnarok review, so that'll just happen now. Yeah, that's what I want cool. to happen. Yeah. And I, I'm I know you want to know what I thought of that. So there was a lot of people. I'm happy it hasn't shown up yet on the list. <laughs> that, that, right. Suspense. Okay. Yeah. My right. number fourteen is Iron Man Two. No, that you were at fifteen. No, my fifteen is Incredible Hulk. I didn't give my 15. Oh, shit. What's your 15? Iron Man 2. Oh, how about that? Yeah, 15 is Iron Man 2. Pretty, so that your, works out okay. So your 15 is Iron Man 2? My 14 is Iron Man 2. What? Okay. My okay. 15 was Incredible Hulk. What's your 14? 14 is Thor, the first one. The first one, okay. Yeah. Uh, the Kenneth Branagh film. Yeah, I only saw it once, and I really liked. I'd really like to see it again. But I remember Fun just movie. really, really liking it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my thirteen, Henry, is Avengers: Age of Ultron. Okay. All right. Um, my thirteen is Doctor Strange. My twelve is Doctor Strange. Oh. Yeah, some All of right. these are working out pretty good. Pretty good. My yeah. 12 is Ant-Man. Okay. My 11 is that first Thor movie. Okay. My 11 is Guardians of the Galaxy the f- 1. Have you not said Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yet? Nope. You have it that high? We're getting there. Okay. 
Uh, we're here. We're up to the top ten Marvel movies. Let's do this. Yeah. Number yeah. number ten. Iron Man three. Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's crazy. No, man. it's not. You like that more than you like fucking Thor and yeah. Ant Man yep. and Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Guardians of the Galaxy two. All right. My number ten is Guardians of the Galaxy two. Okay. My number nine, Henry. Yeah. Here it is. Avengers: Infinity War. Ooh. Ouch. Is okay. that an ouch? You have it much higher. Well, we're in the top ten. Ooh, so Henry loved it. Henry loved Infinity War. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number nine is Avengers 2, The Age of Ultron. Okay. My number eight is Captain America, The Winter Soldier. That's my number eight. I love it. My number seven, and this was hard to rank. Mm. My number seven, The First Iron Man. Now, Yeah, it was hard to rank for me, too. For my Surviving Survivor peeps out there, everyone knows that was my original show on Survivor. We, we ranked <laughs> all the seasons of Survivor. And it's similar in that um, it's hard to rank the first season of Survivor. Yeah. It right. started everything. They hadn't quite figured it out yet, but it was a massive phenomenon in American culture. It's got a satisfying winner and some great characters, but there's really not much gameplay. It's hard to rank. That's how I feel about the first Iron Man movie. Okay. The, it, it's, you know, it, you got to give it. It started this whole fucking thing. It hangs Agreed. together. It's a good superhero movie, but Agreed. it's not quite what the Marvel Universe has become. But uh, but he's got that Robert Downey performance. It's number seven. All right. My number seven is Thor Ragnarok. You liked it. I loved it. That's great. I loved every minute of it. Oh. I, I was blown away. I was really not expecting to like it, as you know, and maybe I might have mentioned on the show. You were was, worried it, about the full-on comedy of it. But it works. It does it's, work. It's fucking hilarious. It's great. It's a fucking buddy comedy movie between is, Thor and the Hulk, and it it's is, totally funny. And they kind of rewrite the way we've looked at Thor, but it works. And I was thinking about some comics I read with Thor where he is a little funnier, and I like that too. Sure. And it, it worked. It doesn't I, have I, to be the same tone every time. You know, I loved it. Loved Great. it. Number, number seven. Very yeah. happy to hear it. Yeah. Number six, Guardians of the Galaxy. All right. Higher, higher than me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. My number six is The Avengers. Love it. My number five. Top five. Top five, baby. Uh, Black Panther. That's my number five. Okay. <laughs> A lot of similarities here. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's actually more similar than I was expecting it to be. Me too. Number um, four, The Avengers. Okay. All right. Uh, number four for me is Iron Man. Love it. My number three, mm. Thor Ragnarok. Nice. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. My number three, The Incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> You're a maniac. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. boy. Uh, we're not done yet. I already know where, where you're going to be a maniac. So, Well, yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a tit for tat. Um, number two. Right. Number, number two. two. Captain America Civil War. Nice. Good placement. Mm -hmm. Number two, as of now. In some ways, Captain America Civil War, the better version of what they were going for in Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> My number two is Avengers Infinity War. You loved it. I did. Okay. I'm excited to talk about it. I, I mostly really liked it. Yeah, oh, it. It's I in the top ten with... here. Right. Yeah. yeah, I saw. I heard. Yeah. And what's and your no oh my number one, the number one best Marvel movie, Henry? <laughs> yeah. Unequivocally, <laughs> is Spider Man: Homecoming. That's fucking insane. Dude. <laughs> I should I should have just made Incredible Hulk my favorite, <laughs> even though it's not. I should have just made it my favorite. <laughs> uh, now the best Marvel movie ever made. 
I had no problem with putting this is Captain America Civil War. Oh, it's okay. My, my favorite movie of the thing. I don't have. That's it. It was so e- the that Russo was easy. brothers. The Russo brothers directed your top two. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't realize that when I was doing it, but I thought about it after, and yeah. yeah Maybe yeah. time to go back and watch Community. <laughs> uh, never going to be that time. Okay, I don't. okay. Yeah. Uh, all out. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's talk about it. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. There's so much we could talk about. I have no idea where to start. Russo Brothers, they come from the world of TV. We already talked about that. Marvel has experimented with that in the past and failed with the likes of Alan Taylor directing Thor The Dark World, um, coming off of Mad Men and Game of Thrones. It's worked better with the Russo Brothers. And uh, so, I mean, we only get two writing credits in this movie, which we talked about already, but, I mean, surely this was written by committee. Yeah, I, I had that feeling too. There's, there's so much, so many styles happening. And, uh, I think by the way, I, I will say one of the reasons I like this movie so much before we get into plot or whatever, cause we've pretty much covered everything else. Um, is I think it helped me seeing Thor Ragnarok so close to this because it sort of prepared me for a lot of the witticisms that do appear in infinity war, which are somewhat absent from civil war. Like, there's more of a Ragnarok feeling going on here. There's some very funny dialogue. I will say, I think that I laughed more in Thor Ragnarok and this movie than any other one. Like, the interactions in Infinity War between, like, Doctor Strange and Iron Man and Iron Man and Spider-Man well, well hilarious. The, I think and, part and, of and, that, Henry, is yeah. they're, in all the regular Marvel movies, like the solo films... You can't. Thor Ragnarok was really the first one to do it, where like you you allow the main character to be comic relief, right? Like yeah. it, he can be right. as funny as everybody else. Right. So in Guardians, like you have Chris Pratt as your lead, who is a very funny comedic actor, but he also has to be the the fucking action hero of that movie. Yeah. So yeah. I enjoyed in this because the Guardians of the Galaxy are just like one piece of this fucking massive puzzle. Right. You can just let Chris Pratt be funny. He is hysterical. He's really funny in this movie. Oh he might my be my God. MVP. He might. We'll talk about uh, it. We'll talk about it. Um, yeah. But you and they do that with so many characters. I mean, Tom Holland it gets to just be funny as Spider Man. There's a lot of characters that are a. It weirdly turns out to be um, a fairly comedic movie, even though it has higher stakes by far than any of the other Marvel movies. Yeah, I agree. And one of the things I liked, and I, I will say this before I say this other thought, I liked Tom Holland in this and in Civil War more than I even liked more than I liked him in his own movie. Well, but I, I think I think that's part of what I'm talking about. It yeah, is, the way they write him is better for these. I don't. I don't than... think it's it's that. I think it's just that he's a comedic character at heart, and you of want course. him to be a supporting character in a bigger movie than the lead of his own movie. Well, but that's that's that. I mean, that's a very interesting assessment. But me personally, that's not true. I love Spider Man. I just I didn't think Homecoming nailed everything that needed to be done about the character but henry did you see the venom trailer in front of this yeah boy that looks like shit i don't know i didn't think it looked like shit i just don't it's an alien symbiote i'm not not that interested in it i'll tell you that i did see three trailers for movies that we're going to be covering in the next like two months i was like mia (laughs) no no what'd you say I was literally fucking, I was literally calculating in the theater, like, how the hell are we going to do this? Oh, well, we shouldn't say what they are. because No, we yeah. won't. We'll have to talk about it later, but there's three things that oh, we're... Oh, can I tell you about my theater-going experience? Yes, and I'll tell you mine. Go ahead. Okay. You go first, because you had a great experience, and you saw yeah, it before I, me. I bought my ticket ahead of time. Parking lot was a madhouse. Theater was like nothing. I walked in, had my ticket already. I asked the kid at the thing, I said... What am I walking into here? <laughs> he goes, nothing, man. It's 28% full. I was like, really? And I walked in. It was crowded, 
but not that bad. It was Thursday night. What goes on in New Jersey? Nothing down here, my friend. Nothing. Uh, and I had my whole row to myself. Perfect seat. Great experience. Uh, I had two nerds behind me wearing Captain America shirts Ugh. and no, but they were helpful because <laughs> they were helpful. <laughs> yes, because at the end of the movie, there's no mid credits uh, stinger. And I I was like, figured there'd be something at the very, very end. But I had to go to the bathroom. And so I was like, I got to wait. Right. So I heard these guys kind of commiserating. And so I literally turned behind me something I never do, never converse with people in movies i just figured these guys will give me the heads up because they'll know i turned around and i said hey uh there's a stinger at the end of this thing they're like oh yeah 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 wait <laughs> oh god and i was like all right thank you uh, thank you that's all i need thank you so that was i had a great experience did what it about smell like you? farts in your theater <laughs> you know what super respectful crowd no kids all like 20 somethings there should be kids I, that bothers me these Doesn't are superhero movies me. no because when i saw thor ragnarok part of the reason i had to leave was because there were too many right. like teenagers and phones and little <laughs> kid there was a baby in thor ragnarok yeah, don't bring I mean, babies to the movies fucking white trash all right anyway how was your experience 350 showing got there at 330 which theater amc that's just for my thing i know which one 34th Street. Okay, you always, that's your go-to. I went to the Regal this week to see uh, Isle of Dogs, Truth or Dare, <laughs> all those movies. Okay, and, okay. Uh, okay. I uh, got there at 3.30, then, are you there, Henry? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm interested. All yeah. right, I thought I lost you. Then, nope. uh Not on my new computer, folks. Got my ticket, okay? Now, they pull out a chart of the theater. They say, oh, pick your seat. God. The I ones that. that are black are full. The ones that are white are open. Hate it. The only ones that were open were in the first two rows. Oh, dude. So I got one in the second row all the way on the right. Oh, all right? man. Then um, get in the theater, walk in there. It's empty. There's like no one in the theater. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, my so God. So went, sat in my usual spot in the back row, okay? Right, sure. Yeah. Pulled out a Milky Way bar, which I bought before the movie. Oh, I had a whole shitload of treats <laughs> with me. I snuck in like fucking bags of shit. Yep. yep. You know, what's this new trend where uh, you get a candy bar and they, like, cut it into two smaller candy bars. Oh, it's so you have to buy, like, three of them. Yeah, it's bullshit. <laughs> it sucks. It's, it sucks. Uh, yeah. So I'm chomping on this Milky Way in the back. Some guy, white guy, like, preppy dude, he mm -hmm. comes up to me. He's like, I think you're in my seat. Oh, my God. Like, we're God. at a concert, you know? And right. so I'm like, uh, oh, that's fine. So I get up, move a couple seats down. Yeah. Then this uh, black couple, they come, they, they say, uh, hey, I think you're in my seat. <laughs> Get up, fine. Sit in the <laughs> third seat. The theater's filling up. Okay, by this point, we've already seen like three trailers. Sure. The lights are down. Yeah. People say, hey, you're sitting in my seat. I get yeah. up. Another one. All right, the movie's starting now. <laughs> Ah, movie theater should be first come first serve. <laughs> oh man, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. I hate the assigned seats, dude. I do not like it. What the fuck is this? Yep, yep. I've tried your move a million times. Buy the assigned seat, sit somewhere else. Someone comes over. Blah yada yada. Don't want to do it. I hate it. Yep. It so sucks. I give up. I give up. I go sit in the first row. Um, watch the opening scene, okay? It's pretty intense. You got Josh Brolin as Thanos. The makeup and the CGI, they look good. Yeah, they you, do. You got uh, your Thor's there. He's looking great. Hemsworth is great in this movie. Hemsworth's so fucking good at this point. As it that really character. is. Yep. And uh, Loki's there. Loki dies. 
fucking crazed ass. Yeah, we, th- we think. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, they they did a good job at selling it, and uh, yes, I agree. Nice I agree. to see Hiddleston They're... again, if only for a second. And they kill, oh, I agree. and they kill uh, Idris Elba too. They kill, they kill Idris Elba. They're they like kill... Marvel's like Idris. We're not using you well enough. Let's kill you. Maybe you could be James Bond in a couple of years. Yeah, they <laughs> pulled a real uh, stringer bell on poor Idris Elba. Again. <laughs> no, come on, he, Idris wants to get the fuck out of the Marvel universe at this Maybe, point. Yeah, yeah. They kill him. They kill Zoe Del- Zaldana. They kill. Vision. Wait, wait, we're not up to that yet. Well, you're already. I'm not done out. with my story. I know. Go ahead. All right. So we watch the opening scene. I'm in the front row on the right. Um, the uh, floor is coated in popcorn. <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting God. next to a couple. Oh, no. Um, n- it seems that neither of them have ever seen a Marvel movie before, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they're discussing God. what might be happening. Oh, no. <laughs> okay? Uh, I get up. At this point, I'm like, I have an idea. <laughs> Jesus, dude. All right? This is disastrous. All right. I go. I sit down on the floor in the aisle of the entrance to the theater. Get out of here. Okay? Went and sat down on the floor. I'm sitting there for like 15 minutes, but the light is bothering me. I tried to tape my my blazer over the light. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. This is like the worst story I've ever heard for, on this show. All right. Oh then uh, I just can't do it anymore. People keep getting up and like going to the concessions or the bathroom. Granted, we're only... We're only 10 minutes into this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's already chow time. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I have to pee. What the fuck? Oh, man. All right. So then I'm just like, fuck it. I went and I sat in that second row on the right. And that's where I sat. Oh, I am sorry. That... <laughs> it was rough going. Wow. I uh... And I paid $17 for this privilege. I paid ten dollars, wrote to myself, nobody in front of me, and put my feet up on the seat in front of me in the on the arm so they weren't blocking anyone and I basically was sleep like lying down. Sounds yeah. nice. It was great. It was fantastic. Had all my belongings on another chair. It's very relaxing. Yeah. No, oh, no, my. I uh I was clutching my belongings. <laughs> Because the floor was covered in popcorn. So I spent the entire movie in a bear hug with my bag and my jacket. Well, let me tell you something, man. I only did this because a friend of mine at work told me, you better buy your tickets weeks ahead of time. It's going to sell out. Uh, That was incorrect, but I was glad that I listened because that's the really, I didn't have to think about anything. I just showed up. And got lucky, and and I pick, I was able to pick the, my favorite theater, uh, and so I bought the ticket three and a half weeks ahead of time, and I was, you know, I don't know, man. Lesson learned, I haven't, maybe. I haven't done that since Sex in the City two. I've never done it. I, I don't did think it, I did it. For, it. I did it for Sex in the City two. Henry had to see that opening night. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. I actually did. I, um, I never thought it was okay. Yeah. Now, um. What was I going to say? Well, I wanted to not forget a point I was going to make about the movie, which will tie into the plot. Oh, okay. One of the things I really loved about the movie was I thought it did a really good job of... Oh, oh, wait. I'm sorry. I remember what I was going to say. Came home this morning. I was on one of my illegal sites, and I saw already someone has posted a video camera video you know like someone went into a theater yeah, with yeah. a video camera and recorded the uh-huh. entire movie i honestly think if i watched that this morning on my laptop it would have been a better experience <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah yeah um yeah what was i gonna say you had a point to make i'm sorry oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. one of the things i think the movie did well was dividing its stories up in almost in, in comic panel fashion, not a la Zack Snyder Watchmen, 
But like it reminded me of the comics where like you're involved in one story and then it flips you back to another part of it. And it does it very well. When it first started switching from like who's up to what on where like Earth and then, you know, kept switching. I got a little nervous because I was like, oh, man, how many storylines are we going to be doing? Are they ever going to converge? But like it does it well. It's it's very comic booky, And I mean that in the best sense of the well, word. Well, it really does feel like a fucking crossover. Like uh, more so yeah. than any of the other movies they've done. Yes. W- like yes. Y- you know, Marvel has this penchant where uh they have single comics all year, like every character has their own book and then in the summer they'll have like a seven issue miniseries that's like the big crossover and in past years it's been stuff like civil war secret invasion or uh uh world war hulk or uh yeah. infinity was one or what was the one i gave you recently the one um uh, original oh. sin oh yeah yeah, yeah that was right. one yeah, yeah. uh so they've been doing this forever, dating back to probably the 80s. Secret Wars was a big one. Mm-hmm. And this movie is largely based on one that was from the early 90s called Infinity Gauntlet, which is actually one of the first comics I ever read. I have like oh. the original issues of that from when I was like a tiny child. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and and it also takes a lot from Infinity too. Jonathan Hickman's comic from a few years ago. All those th- uh, Thanos henchmen are from that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Carrie okay. Coon has like four lines for no reason. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> funny. That was hilarious. I didn't know it was her. Which is especially doing. funny considering um, the uh, this movie ends with the leftovers happening. <laughs> The parallels are there. Yeah, it's not Love the character. parallels. It's exactly the leftovers. What do they really? Ashes like they, fucking that? Samuel L. Jackson and Kobe Smulders see like a car crash, and then they look in it, and no one's there. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I right. mean, all that the, the the movie ends with Thanos enacting the rapture. Right. That's true. That's yeah. True. And I I think also some of my generosity in putting it ranking it so high is also that it is part one uh, and that I'm giving it a little bit of leeway to s- wrap it up next year. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, so see the cliffhanger, you know, it did, it did. I it, think it, did. it is part one, but I thought it was kind of brilliant in hindsight. Do you remember when they first announced these movies, they were going to be called Avengers Infinity War part one and part two? Yeah, yeah. And and then they said, no, part two is going to have its own title. It's going to be its own thing. This movie is part one. It, it's, it's just Avengers Infinity War. Right. So, like, that's bullshit. Clearly, the next movie is Avengers Infinity War Part 2, even though it's not going to be called that. Um, But the brilliant thing about this movie ending that way and being called that is you're going into this movie expecting a superhero story. And the one thing that, like, sucks the tension out of every superhero story is you know the superheroes are going to win at the end of it. Right. And it's pretty fucking cool that Thanos wins at the end of this yeah, movie. Yeah, I totally agree. And did you catch the the last little bit? You know, like, at the end of every movie, it's like, you know, fucking Thor will return and whatever. Um, well, if you're talking about the stinger, I said, yeah, I, we didn't talk about it, but yeah. No, 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 but I mean, like, you know, like, at the end of the James Bond movies when it says, yes, like... yes. So at the end of this one, it where it didn't say the Avengers will return. Right. It, it said Thanos will return. Oh, did it? I don't yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's you might cool. have been pissing. No, I didn't leave. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> I didn't leave. I was just not paying attention to some of the credits because I was waiting for the end credit stinger. The setup um, for Captain Marvel, which helped me. Also, the nerds behind me helped me with that because I think I would have gotten it. But I would have taken. Oh, you a didn't bit. recognize the Captain Marvel logo. It, it was a little bit. It was a little bit hard. I, hard for me to. Fi- I, I. I. It was one of those things where it clicked with me, like a couple of minutes after. But I didn't need to have it click because the guys behind me. <laughs> I didn't need to have it click. I didn't said? need to have it click because uh, well, someone, were- someone in my theater, as it showed up on the screen, 
yelled at the top of her lungs, Uh-oh. Captain Marvel! Oh, my God. Okay. Well, you wouldn't have needed that, but um, behind me, I had the two nerds. They said, Captain Marvel. <laughs> awesome. Uh, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then ejaculated all over the seat. Uh, yeah. Brie Larson. <laughs> I'd like to lock her up in a room. In a room. Yeah. No. All right. Hey, I'm looking forward to that movie. Um, what, Captain Marvel? Sure, of course. Yeah, it's going to be before. I had to look that up. It, obviously, I figured, but I wanted to make sure before this show. So it is, it is going to only come out a couple of months before the sequel to this but, but it's going to take happen. place in the 90s so it's like a period piece and then uh she's going to show up in like modern continuity right for the first that's kind of cool so they're like i guess nick fury's going to summon her yeah, yeah i think like jack sam jackson's going to be in that captain marvel movie sans eye patch oh okay yeah and since he's pretty ageless it won't really matter nope yeah. um henry i've got to tell you Mm. Mm. You know I forgot what I was going to say when I say I got to tell you. Hey, uh, so we got space shit and earth shit in this movie, okay? There's lots of space battles. And I I really started to think about how, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is, like, so established now that it's like fucking Star Wars or something. Like the movies, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. We're like, we know all these little sections of it. Yeah, that actually occurred to me too, weirdly. Yeah. Star Wars entered my mind. Yeah. Like, I guess the planet visiting and all that stuff, yeah. It, I can't say that Star Wars ever had entered my mind in any other Marvel movie, but in this one it definitely did. Well, there's a yeah. lot of space, and we're dealing with yeah. certain characters in space. There's one section of it where we're dealing with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Way more Guardians of the Galaxy in this movie than I was expecting. Me too. Um, yeah. Well, there was a couple things I didn't care for. I mean, would you want to say what you didn't care for? Anything? Um. Okay, well, there's... I mostly wasn't that into... All the stuff with Iron Man and Spider Man and Doctor hmm. Strange. That's interesting. I was. I I like that. Okay. I, one, if we're gonna be putting Spider Man in an Avengers movie, I don't want him in space. Yeah, that was weird. I that what that was weird, but I got used to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it I was, liked his costume that was right out of the comics. I don't need it. Yeah, the iron, don't, don't iron, it, iron it, spider. I know. Right, don't need it, but it was it was cool to as a comic guy. I was cool Throw to see that. him in Wakanda. I want to see Spider Man in Wakanda. That would be cool. That would be yeah. better. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. and you look, you do get the fun rapport. Tom Holland has really good chemistry with Robert Downey Jr. Weirdly, but um, uh, oh, he has good chemistry with everybody. Yeah, and it, yeah. with, so with um, his line, there are so many good one liners, but like. And I do want to say some of them with you because they are really funny. But, but like, just the one that m- made me laugh was between Spider Man and and uh, Star Lord, right? When he says something like, "Like Footloose, is it still the greatest movie ever made?" It never was. <laughs> it never was. Yeah, <laughs> and that was fun. I like Tony Stark. And the aliens reference. I the like alien. Tony Stark saying the Spider Man. Like, if I. He- <laughs> one more fucking pop culture reference for me. He didn't say fucking. Yeah. Um there's a lot of a lot of shits and bullshit. There though. were well the stakes were high. You gotta swear douche a few bag. times. You got douchebag, dipshit. There, yeah, uh Cumberbatch struggled with uh douchebag in an American accent. I didn't hear a struggle. <laughs> did, did you really hear it? Yeah, douche, yeah. Douchebag. I actually thought Cumberbatch was kind of great in this. Oh, I thought he was great. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, they used as 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 badly as I thought they used Spider Man, uh, not that they used him badly, but just like I would have done different shit with him. Yeah, I thought if you're gonna put Doctor Strange in an Avengers movie, they kind of used him exactly right. Oh, I think they did, and yeah. I think uh, to sound super nerdy, I I really liked the usage of his powers. I, I thought they were really cool, like. In, especially when they're in New York, like just keep creating these portholes where people are falling into them and out of them. I thought that was great. And I thought good little use of Wong. Also. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. That guy's um, great. 
Um, which brings me to one of my little problems with the movie. Okay. Wasn't too big a fan of Bruce Banner being unable to turn into the Hulk. Oh, me neither. And did he ever? In the beginning. That was it. Oh, right, the, right at the very the beginning. the first sequence, when Loki rehashes uh, Iron Man's line from the Avengers, and Loki says, we have a Hulk. It, it reminded me of... But it was like, Jesus, man. It reminded me of Empire Strikes Back. When, mm. like, the big moment in Star Wars is, like, light speed, right? And so in the second one, they had, like, oh, the Millennium Falcon, it can't do light speed. And so, like, the whole movie, like, they keep, like, oh, we're going to do it. Oh, right. we can't do right, it. Right, right, right. <sighs> but then, yeah, um... Jeez, like, I didn't I didn't understand the point of that, because Bruce Banner using the Hulkbuster suit was just kind of a... It was a waste. I mean, when we're on Wakanda, especially at the end of that big battle sequence, so who wants to watch Bruce Banner in an Iron Man suit fight? I mean, I want to see fucking Hulk come out. I mean, it made no sense to me. I did not understand that. I get it at first. I didn't. But I, I thought that we were going to. He, yeah. he needs to turn into the Hulk in the third act. Yeah. I kept thinking it was going to happen. Like, I didn't lose hope. I was like, all right, all right, all right. This is going to be it. And then it just doesn't happen. It's like, for what? What was the decision with that i don't know yeah ruffalo was kind of misused in in the yeah, whole movie I, I i i also felt like there was that scene that uh, that he had kind of an underwhelming reunion with scarlett johansson very underwhelming i, I could have used more scarlett johansson in this movie too yeah and then also two characters that i think really need to get going if if they need to get going at all you're probably gonna be like who fucking cares i don't like him anyway but what what are we doing with 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 Bucky and Falcon? <laughs> no, what are we, what are no, we doing? I disagree. We, I disagree. we gave War Machine a, a a good deal to do here, which was great to see Don Cheadle get some. Cheadle was time. fantastic in this. Yeah, agreed. F- like legit but, like, funny. He made me laugh. Oh, a I agree. Times. Yeah, I agree. But like, so less so Bucky. He gets some stuff, but I mean Falcon, man. What Anthony Mackie? What what are we doing? He flies in, barely talks. I, I don't. Mean, I. I, get... I. I don't need them in an Avengers movie. That's the thing. Yeah, but like, they're, they're in. It. I. I know. But so, they're here. So that's so. fine. That's fine. They're background characters. I. I don't care. I listen. Yeah. The movie's overstuffed as is. I don't need true, the Falcon true. to have a storyline. No. 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 I, I. I. agree. I just was. I was just seemed very random as to why certain tertiary characters got more time than others. You know what I mean? Like, like who did get more time? War Machine. Oh well, know? but that's because you have to. Or Cheetah. Wong. Yeah, that's true. He did give Wong some I mean, stuff, and we gave Black Panther's uh, sidekick, uh, Danai Ganara. Gen- what, yeah, her? Danai Guerrera. She, and, she and gets more she time. Gets, and she's like, great. You know, she's fantastic. They were smart. They. they could, you can see because this movie was made before Black Panther came out. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, of course it was. Black Panther just fucking came out. Yeah, but so did this. I didn't. I didn't know. It was, you know. I mean, they were probably filming simultaneously. <laughs> right. I mean, I, so, yeah. so okay. like, um, it was smart of them to know how big Black Panther was going to be. Like, well, they, see, I didn't they know clearly, that. I they clearly saw it coming because no, I didn't fucking. Know that. But you could tell watching this movie because well, no, to me it looked like oh, but a the, huge the... fucking section of it takes place in Wakanda, right? right. And like the and you Shuri and Danny Guerrero get a lot to do. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. And there's that huge moment, like I mean, and now Wakanda Forever has become this like catch-all for like social issues, and like yeah, people love true. that line, and so like. There's a huge moment in this movie where, you know, Chadwick Boseman screams out Wakanda forever as they run into battle. Right. And, like, right. how the fuck did they, like, Marvel is... is A lot of foresight. They they can tell what's going to hit, what's going to pop. They got an A-team, man. You know what got the biggest pop in this entire movie, though, from the crowd? Oh, what? When Cap first showed up. Really? People love Captain that, America, man. That got a big one from me. That was one of my favorite moments. When he emerges guy, from the shadows with that, that beard, awesome. the whole crowd uh, applauded. That was awesome. No, I didn't. My crowd was pretty subdued, but they they Mine cheered. Mine too, but that was like a huge moment. 
Yeah, but mine didn't. Mine were more like laugh, like a lot of laughs at the funny moments. But like for me, that was one of the best moments. I agree, they did that great. And I got to tell you, um, you probably knew. I didn't know when they you see like the silhouette. That I didn't know it was him. No, I I didn't know who it was gonna be. It was great. It was great little setup. really good moment. Great intro to Chris Evans, who was also good in this movie. Not given a ton to do. No, he is. He isn't. That's very true. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, you know it's it's not perfect. It's it's it's, it's it's just a fucking stuffed movie, and that's the it thing. Is. It's why I can't, in good conscience, put it as high on the rankings as maybe its stature warrants. Right? Because I mean, well, that it, comes. It just doesn't ter- work as well as Civil War, which was like a huge universe-spanning storyline, but it was so much. It, it, you were able to follow it, like to me. In this movie, Thanos and, like, him finding the Mind Stone and the Soul Stone and the Reality Stone and going to nowhere and battling the Collector, and I just don't give a shit about any of that. It's bordering a little too close to Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings or some shit. Yeah, and the the big emotional moment, you know, when he kills his daughter, Gamora, I didn't really... It didn't didn't connect to me. It yeah. didn't connect to me. And it's, and Gamora is a good character, but she's uh I don't I don't know. I, I I didn't love the scene with her and Pratt earlier in the movie, which I think was supposed to make us care more when she died and uh, Is it a little bit of it Zoe to Zaldana? I don't know if it's the writing because, because Zaldana so can do it, man. But so- Pratt is does it. I mean, he does what he's supposed to. I don't know if she's just maybe a little blank. I don't could, know. Could be a little bit of a watery character. It, yeah. Not not specific enough. Um, I mean, it I will be- say the stuff with Guardians I really liked. The, the, frankly, one of the best scenes in the movie is the scene where Drax thinks he can turn invisible. That's very fucking funny. <laughs> very fucking funny. I also loved... When, uh, never Batista! How great is Batista? He's, dude, that fucking guy, he's great in... Um, Blade Runner 2049. Agreed. He's great in Bushwick. I haven't watched that. You haven't? No. It was shot on my block. I know it was. Yeah. I recognized everything in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, he's great. I love the moment when Groot turns it, uh, makes Thor's axe. I thought that, that was, was great. really great. Yeah. I liked um, angsty teen Groot. Yeah, yeah, Vin Diesel really knows how to give a good performance. Uh, <laughs> and you know what was kind of amazing in this movie? How much Rocket Raccoon had to do. I needed to ask you a question <laughs> about Rocket. Okay. Rabbit. R- Rabbit, as Thor keeps calling him, and yes, I love it. Um, I love that too. Is Bradley Cooper, like, changing the way he yes, voices? Yes, yes. Okay. But, you I know, I remember- kind of appreciate that. He's doing a performance, whereas, like, in Deadpool... Um, mm-hmm. like Ryan Reynolds is just doing the Ryan Reynolds voice. Oh no, no, totally, totally agreed. Uh, but what I mean is, uh, it wasn't a criticism. It was like, I w- was I misremembering the first two Guardians of the yes, Galaxy? Yes, you are. Because- that was a big criticism when the first Guardians movie came out. Like a lot of the reviews were like, "Why hire Bradley Cooper to do a voice if you can't tell it's him?" Well, because I didn't. It wasn't. It was more like in this one, he's kind of talking like he's like got a New York accent, and I don't remember that. Yeah, in that's the first it. Two. That's in there. I, I didn't remember. He talks like that in the yes. first two. Yes, he does. Okay, totally didn't remember that. Um, yeah. Oh, damn it! I had another a point I was gonna make. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. I well, you would have, but you you interrupted me before. Well, I do that a lot. Yeah, it's okay. It's part of the good. Oh, I don't know. It'll come back to me at some point. Um, uh, yeah. Can I tell you a character that um, improved for me this go around, and also a character that they did their hardest to get me to care about and still couldn't? <laughs> Ooh, I'd love to guess. Yeah, can I try. Please do. Can I get? Can I get three guesses? Because there's a lot of sure. People. Who's the character that they really tried to get me to care about but could not? Pepper Potts. No, Pepper Potts is in like two scenes and she worked fine. Vision. That's it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. I Come cared, on. I Let's cared call less. a spade a spade on this one. <laughs> I cared less about Vision than I did in Ultron. Same and here. I, and I liked him in Ultron, unlike you. So I just did not care. It was when Thanos so it, ripped that gem out of his head. I that should like have been into like, it. yeah, that should have been like, I would imagine a very, it was still very well done, but, but I it just, was, it, I was mostly like, I feel like I should have felt something, but dude, I was when, mostly just psyched to see vision. get his I ass agree. Kicked. I agree. Totally agree. Dude. I'll tell you what gave me a little bit of chills. And I, I have to say, I don't know if I want to fault the movie, but. When Thanos uh, stabs Iron Man, I I I gotta tell you, I I thought he was gone. I, I wanted that was gonna him to be the be big gone. one. Yeah, me too. I thought that was gonna be the big one, and I was gonna like take my hat off and be like, "Oh, Marvel, white balls on they you!" They did it. They did it. But no, nah, they, they did. They pulled back. The yeah. thing about this ending, where most of our characters disintegrate into dust. <laughs> is you don't know what matters and what doesn't. It, they could easily, in the next movie, just have a reset button fucking ending. And yeah. everybody's just like... Well, they will, I think. I mean, yeah. this does happen, I think, in Infinity Gauntlet. I kind of mm-hmm. remember one of the issues ending with all the characters dying. Oh, okay. And then, yeah. like, in the next issue, somehow they come back or something, or two issues right. from then. Um yeah, I I don't know. It's it's effective as it goes, and Alan Silvestri's score is pretty good in this movie, better than in the Avengers. I think I agree. He's trying a little different. He's trying, there. but you know what? I have a bone to pick with Marvel music right now. No problem here, because yeah. there's a good moment where um, the Avengers theme pops up, kind of mournfully. Sure. And I'm like, that kind of worked. There should be yeah. more of that in the movie. They should use everybody's themes. And then I was thinking about it, and I was like, nobody has a memorable <laughs> theme. <laughs> like, there's, you get a stinger when Wakanda shows up that's like, oh, yeah, Black Panther, sweet. Right. And right. then there's. Um, the, that's a good point. And then the first time they cut to space, they. Um, they use like a 70s pop song and then you're like, right. oh, we're checking in with the Guardians because right. that's sort of like their whole aesthetic. Right. But, then, yep. but then there's like no other thing where like like you can't just like cut to like an exterior and start playing some music and then go like, oh, you're sweet right. fucking uh, Ant-Man's going to show up. That Nobody has uh, any music. That is a superb point, my friend. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that one, big, especially from my musical side. There, that is a great point. I mean, there should be some recognition on some of these themes. I mean, like, you know, uh, it would be like if you had uh, Superman from the you know the John Williams score with like the the Hans Zimmer Dark Knight score. You know, like they're so iconic, and there are none. Yeah, I mean that I can think of. We named nineteen fucking movies, and I mean, there's not an original theme in them that you're. It's thinking just of. Avengers. Yeah, Avengers. Yeah, yeah. I remembered my point now. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's let me get it out. Okay. Yeah, the rankings that we did. I wanted to point out. I don't know about you, my friend, but it's clearly not representative of our star ratings of the movies. I think uh, mine are. Mine aren't there. They aren't because I know for a fact that some of my lower movies on there, I gave five at the time and they're lower than some that I gave four. Um, and so also what I'm good, what it leading into of infinity war being my number two of all time, I'm not giving it five stars. Okay. Me neither. I, okay. But, but my point is I ranked it higher than certain movies I gave. I believe when we did iron man, I gave that five stars. I think you did too. Um, no, I believe I gave it four. I'm I'm okay. looking at my but, at my rankings right now, and I think my number nineteen, Thor two, I gave two stars, mm-hmm. and then um, Cap first Avenger at number eighteen, all the way up to Thor at number eleven. I think those are all three star movies. Oh, okay. And then Mine's Iron Man three at ten, all the way up to Avengers at four are four-star movies, and then my only fives are Thor Ragnarok, Civil War, and Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, all right. Well, good for you. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't really even consider it because it was already I didn't difficult. really consider it, but I think it worked out that way. It worked out for you, yeah. yeah. 
The reason I put it at number two is because I really do think, again, sort of like I said when we were talking about last week with the Avengers and the Avengers 2 Age of Ultron, they really pulled it together in a very well. I mean, I, I had high hopes for this movie, and to a certain extent, they were pretty much met. I mean, we have I had qualms that we've already discussed, but for the most part, I had a fucking great time. I'm totally going to watch this again. I mean, so I'm actively excited to watch it again. Yeah, me too. It's a totally great culmination. I mean, it's it's just like it's like a band that consistently puts out good albums. And, (laughs) you know, you're you might be one or two tracks on there that are filler. But overall, you're just smiling that it was done at all and it was done well. Yeah, every album is good. Most of them aren't masterpieces, but they've all got some solid tracks on there. Marvel Cinematic Universe truly is the REM of films. (laughs) (laughs) REM? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I can think of like other bands, I think, but that's okay. All right. I'm not (laughs) not well-educated enough on... Automatic for the people. Well, that's their masterpiece. Automatic Automatic. for the people is the Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, okay. Okay. (laughs) That's great. I love it. I love it. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Infinity War is more of a an out of time or a life's rich pageant. Oh, so I thought out of time. Well, that was the big one when I was. A well, teenager. that was the big one because I was losing my religion on it. But right. there's definitely some filler in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Listen, yeah. nobody listens to Endgame in its entirety. Am I right? You skipped I've that one. Never even heard of it. <laughs> Name a Beck album that is. That's the. That's the. Uh, all right. What was your What was your least favorite uh, Marvel movie? I'm sorry. Uh, Thor: Thor The Dark World. What's the Dark World of of, of Beck yeah. albums? Stereo yeah. pathetic soul manure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Infinity War is like uh, probably uh, you know modern guilt or Guero, <laughs> and then okay, uh, okay. and then like Civil War. That's um, Odile. You know what they could have done. You got me thinking. You know what they could have done? Because at least Iron Man has ACDC. They could have thrown in I, I thought of that. I thought of that, Hank. Because yeah. uh, the first Avengers movie did that. Right. And I thought I mean, that was pretty smart. It's been used in Iron Man, Iron Man 2, and the Avengers. And why not? I mean, so if we don't have good scores, uh, and we're pretty much using the Avengers theme as the default for, for everyone... Where kind of it maybe should just be used for Cap, but that's okay. Um, no, it should be used that, for the core Avengers, right? Like the four, for yeah, like a is, shot that's... of like the team together. Play that, but right. So use use Rubberman and the '70s stuff for the, the Guardians, and then throw in some ACDC for Iron Man just at, at the beginning. That there you go. Surely Thanos should have had some kind of fun evil theme though, Absolutely. like uh, Black like Sabbath the dark. No, the... no, score wise, oh, Sylvester. Yeah. Couldn't have come up with an imperial death march for Thanos. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh, now what about uh, we didn't the elephant in the room here? Um, uh, again, I guess we talked about it already. But any more thoughts on the absence of Hawkeye or anything like Don't that? Care, Don't care. Fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would have liked did... Ant Man. Would have liked Ant Man. I would have loved to see Ant Man um, because if we're gonna truly be bringing together all the cast of the Marvel universe, like we've already seen Hawkeye in team movies in this True. in this context, Ant Man um, was a pretty big release. Paul Rudd and like uh, it's um, th- it was the last movie in Phase Two. <laughs> we're gonna I love, talk I in those Ant-Man. terms. It's my number twelve. But and, I loved it. And so, yeah. like, you know, it would have been nice to see, you know, frankly, put Spider-Man in Wakanda, send uh, Paul Rudd out to space. Yeah, could because also he has a similar vibe to Spider-Man in terms of their humor. Exactly. So he, he, he could spar with Strange and Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verbally. Would yeah. have been good. Yep, yep. Um, who's the character, Henry, that they sold me on a little more in this movie? Hmm. Who did they sell you on a little more? Oh, did they sell you a little bit on Scarlet Witch? They did. Wow. Now, now yeah. first, her powers are still ridiculous. <laughs> they make no sense. They make no sense. I did love that moment where um, she just like makes the fucking she she like uses yeah. her power to make everyone die, <laughs> and then uh, 
And Danny, who was it? Danny Guerrero, who has the line like, "Why was she up there?" Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That was great. I love. Yeah, that too. yeah. That yeah, was yeah. a great moment. But um, listen, Henry. Yeah. Did you happen to notice a little something about Elizabeth Olsen's performance this movie? I certainly did. Where she ain't, she hey, ain't no Russian. Hey, hey, where was that Russian accent? <laughs> Maybe heeding my criticism a little bit. She heard you. Yeah, she did. In another in another parallel Marvel galaxy, she heard you and redid her. That's yeah. so funny to me, though. Like that shit yep. just did not work in that you last been movie. Me in that. So you they cut been- bait. It, they did the same thing with fucking Halle Berry in the X Men movies. Oh right. Sure. She has that terrible accent that in the first Centaurian. one, and then they were just like, Halle, stop doing it. Yeah, she stopped that Centaurian bullshit. Yeah, you, you ought to have been me in this movie being utterly perplexed at, at the at Rocket Raccoon and Scarlet Witch. Of course, I was wrong about Rocket. But for me going, well, wait, 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 now he's from Brooklyn? And wait, wait, now, now Scarlet Witch is, is is from, like, you know, Indiana? What's, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, one of the best lines, too. Uh, Iron Man says to Peter Quill, you're from Earth? No, I'm from Indiana. That's Earth dipshit. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that made me laugh hard. Um, uh, I so yeah, Elizabeth Olsen. She's allowed to just like be Elizabeth Olsen in this movie, <laughs> and so uh, I liked Scarlet Witch quite a bit more. Yeah, she's um, there. and uh, and just this week, Christian Toto uh gave a shout out on Twitter to Martha Marcy May Marlene. Said no one talks about this movie, and I was like, Yo, Toto, we talked about it on the podcast just this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a great, great movie. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Olsen. So, uh, what else you got? <laughs> Not that much more, really. I mean, I got MVP, LVP. So the movie version. ends with the fucking rapture, and uh, yeah, and yeah. we'll see what happens. Basically, I did love the, the uh, I I I genuinely missed Samuel L. Jackson in this movie. So I was happy he at least showed up in the post credit sequence. Um, yeah, I didn't miss him. But that was a great usage of him in a post credits sequence. I, I agree. And uh, also very cool because he's obviously in the first Marvel movie, Iron Man. He's the he is the stinger. And then he's the stinger in this. The, the last one of this whatever fucking phase or whatever. So that was a cool. I have a couple cool questions. Touch. All right. Henry. Yeah. How many Marvel movies are coming out between Infinity War and the next Avengers movie? I think two. We know Ant Man and the Wasp, which right. I don't know anything about, and uh, Captain Marvel. That's all I thought. Okay, that's fine. Captain Marvel takes place in the nineties. Yeah, and it's interesting. I don't know what they're going to do with Ant Man and the Wasp, considering yeah, Avengers: Infinity War ends with um, the whole planet dying. <laughs> Well, so, <laughs> or fifty like percent of them. Selective, yeah. So obviously, he's so not is one of is them. that movie gonna deal with that, or is it gonna do a thing like um, if you? I mean, you don't remember this, but uh, Civil War back in the day was that that comic book was scheduled to run seven issues and therefore seven months. And then Steve McNiven, the artist of the comic, um, started handing in issues late. Okay. And so they had to extend the crossover by like two months. And so it forced like every Marvel writer to have to just like write weird, random storylines oh that took place like in the margins of that crossover. You said I wouldn't remember it, but I don't think I even knew that. Yeah. And so, <laughs> um, fucking, is that what we're going to do now? <laughs> like, I, I don't, don't know. Like, cause I... here's another question, Henry. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a television show that still exists. Right. That takes place in the Marvel Universe. Right, yeah, yeah. What is that show going to look like I don't know. after this? I mean, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, I mean, it depends, I guess, all on production, right? The timing. I mean, they could... It doesn't could... have to do with production because it, it it's coming out after this, so... so... No, 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 no. What I mean is if they knew already the storylines of Infinity War, then they right. could have worked it in. So I would assume that it's you – know, I would think that 
everyone involved in the Ant-Man universe is still alive. And maybe, maybe what would be cool, this is like, I'm creating this story. Maybe it would be cool if like Hank Pym is trying to figure out, you know, what happened to everybody and how to get some kind of science to bring them. You know, who but knows? But that's maybe a it- big left turn to take for that franchise. Like the first movie was a pretty low key heist yes. flick with a final action sequence that took place in like a fucking chew box at his yeah, daughter's but house it, but it's they they've done it before i mean we moved i know you, winter soldier is like an espionage yeah. movie whereas like first avenger is a war movie uh, yeah. but like it, it, i don't know if that's what i want from ant-man <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean i've seen it i've seen the trailer for have you i yeah. haven't i saw it a while ago and Nope, there's nothing in there that I recall that they remark on anything. All, all I remember is some funny line where, like, uh, who's the actress? What's her name? Um, you think Lee? you think I remember female actresses in the Marvel universe? Yes, because you don't you like her from Lost? No, right, Evangeline Lilly, she's great. But again, <laughs> I couldn't remember that if you asked me the same uh, way. Like, um, Natalie yeah. Portman is expendable in the Thor movies. Liv Tyler was expendable in Incredible Hulk, right. and Rachel McAdams is expendable in Doctor Strange. They really need to write better female leads. I, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, no, I remember a line. A line in the trailer has Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas discussing like the Wasp's costume and that she can fly, and Paul Rudd's like. Some, it says something like, oh, you must have invented that after you did my suit or like you would have given it to me. <laughs> and Michael Douglas is like, no, no, that was already invented. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Ev- is Evangeline Lily the Wasp? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you really don't remember Ant-Man at all, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> they pretty much <laughs> set that up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, uh, what do you give this movie? I'm giving it four stars. Same. All right. Who's your MVP? I have a tie. It's inevitable <laughs> in a movie of this magnitude. It's inevitable. Okay. The Russo brothers. Look at that. And Chris Pratt. I love Chris Pratt as a choice. That was going to be my MVP. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Pratt's fantastic. I, I'm looking at the cast list right now. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give it. Chris Pratt's my MVP. I'm going to give a quick shout-out to Cumberbatch, and I'm going to give a quick shout-out to Tom Holland because um, he was the only one during the whole rapture sequence that really made me uh, get emotional. Oh. I thought his reaction to being yeah, that raptured was, was, that was like a little, a little raw. It was raw, especially with Iron Man watching it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Downey was great too, by the way. Downey was fantastic. Him. Downey in his like sort of last ditch battle against Thanos. I I mean, the fact that when Thanos stabbed yeah. him, I was totally comfortable with that being Iron Man's death scene. Yes. Go- goes to show how good Downey was in the moments leading up to that because really it, it true. felt big and important enough. Really true. For that was... to be the end of that character. Yeah, very very good. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I've changed my LVP then uh, during our discussion. Um, my dis- my LVP was going to be like sort of not up against actors, but it was going to be with the characters of, of Bucky and Falcon. But I think my LVP is going to be it's it's like a, it's more <laughs> it's going to be Bruce Banner. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, it was just what the fuck? I, I what a, a, a waste. A waste. Yeah, that's my LVP. No, not a good usage of, of the Hulk. My LVP, right. and no disrespect, is Gamora. I I, I totally uh, get that. Yep. I just yep. think that yep. uh, that, I mean, sh- y- there's, you find out, I don't remember, I think you found this out in a previous movie, but Gamora is Thanos' daughter. Yeah, you did. And so, like, Gamora has to be a really big character in this movie. We have to really care when she bites it. I agree. Like, I mean, Gamora is so important to this movie that we, like, get a flashback to, like, little kid Gamora. Yeah. (laughs) And, like, I I, like, super didn't care about any of that. Neither did I. Yeah. I didn't care either. Yeah. And I don't know whose fault that is, but that's a that's a big 
problem with this movie. Okay, so the two green characters are getting the LVP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know who else I'm, I'll, I just want to give a shout out to? Sure, and did sure. you even remember she was in this movie? Can we cut bait on Nebula already? <laughs> <laughs> I liked her torture scene. I thought that was cool. Stop it. Uh, we could we could drop her. That's Who fine. cares? We could drop her. <laughs> she reminded me of one of those scenes in like one of the comic books where like there's some tertiary character hanging out at a table and they have like one line of dialogue and you're like, wait, who's this? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's that great scene in Civil War, the comic where Punisher walks in with Spider-Man's like beaten body and says like, "Get me a doctor right now." It's like this great panel. Do you remember that? Yeah, and I do. Captain- yeah, and like there's a bunch of people sit- seated seated around the like rebels, like Caps people, and like there's like some lines of dialogue by like people who are like, "Who the fuck is that?" Talking? Who are they? Oh, it's like um uh. Patriot uh, and uh, some other people with like hoods and stuff, like Nighthawk. Oh, and sure. Sh- yeah, yeah. Characters from like, like the New Warriors and shit. Right. And you're like, yeah. well, wait, what's your purpose in this? Yeah. And it's yeah. just kind of like, it, hey, yeah, it's, it's, it's me, Night Thrasher. <laughs> <laughs> hey, gang. hey guys it's dark hawk yeah I yeah know. it's like wait a second i'd rather can, can can you just let cap please react to this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. who's that in the background is it nfl super pro oh great question <laughs> i have a further question for you my friend what you talked about agents of shield how's this going to affect the netflix marvel universe we oh, ig- please Punisher, ignore it. Jessica please Jones. ignore it. I'm mm. begging you to ignore it. Man, I finished Jessica Jones finally. So good. It's boring. Season two is boring. You yeah. suck. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Not as much as the first season, but I loved it. Yeah. All you right. know who I couldn't care less about? Her love Uh-oh. interest. Oh. Uh... uh don't even remember. Oh, there he you was go. so important that she there was like you... having dinner with his family in the last season. Oh, that guy. That guy. Right, 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 right. Fuck right, that right. guy. Yeah. yeah, I didn't care about that. I'm waiting to see the, the one turn into that other superhero, right? Her Hellcat. Best. Yeah. Yeah. I want some Hellcat action. Yeah. yeah. Patsy Walker Hellcat. Yeah. Well, it'll affect. It should affect it. Jesus. A little bit. Of no, crazy. ignore I it. I want to see Daredevil in Infinity War 2. <laughs> I would love that. That. Would Marvel, if you're listening, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> Do it. And, and by the way, even if they, <laughs> Marvel has a lot of fucking nerdy podcasts about Infinity War to go through this weekend. No I shit. mean, this is the least original idea we've ever had on this show. Absolutely, I know. <laughs> but there's such a part of me that would love to see that shit, man. How oh, hundred cool percent. It would be great. Oh my god. Great. Yep. Yep. But uh, hey, what's your superhero count? <laughs> I got me six. That's it? This was a lot of fun, people. Uh, 28 people I had to go through. and I. This is all six. people that were not in the first two Avengers movies. That's right. Hey, I could have used Coulson in this movie. I could have. I thought about him. Yeah. He occurred to me during the movie. Mm. I thought that would be neat. Yeah, no, no, no. I found 28 to 30 people who weren't in stuff we've covered and still found six. Okay? All right, let me hear. All right. Peter Dinklage. Oh, I was close to giving him LVP. Yeah, he was great. No, we- I forgot about this. And to me, Dinklage, you have him playing a giant because he's a, a dwarf. And yep. I I just think it was fan service. He got a pop from the audience. And like, like yeah, it, my t- crowd like, too, my crowd too. My God, it, to me, it was a lot of the people in the audience that don't super care about Marvel were just sort of like, oh, it's, it's fucking, what's his character? Uh, Daenerys Tyr- Targaryen, Tyr- 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 Tyrion, Lannister. Tyrion Lannister. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's oh. the best part of that show. But people, I, I just, I like Peter Dinklage. He's a great actor and a great guy, by the way. Marvel, yeah, a, a regular at Barnes and Noble back in the day. Really? You never saw him? I, I helped I him a hundred times. I don't think I ever did. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, uh, I just, he, he distracted me the entire time he was on screen. He's. It's not a I bad performance. It. I just. No. I. I just don't care. I got over it. Get him yeah. out of there. All right. 
Anyway, Peter Dinklage was, of course, in another uh, comic book movie called X Men Days First... of Future Past. Oh, Days of Future Past, right? Yeah, Bolivar Trask. That's right, the inventor of the Sentinels. Yeah, uh, Benedict Wong, um, who we've covered in a couple other movies, but he was also in uh, Kick Ass Two, playing Mister Kim. Okay. Benicio del Toro as the collector was in Sin City playing Jack Rafferty. Didn't recognize him. That's really? how bad my seats were. Oh my god. The collector showed up on the screen and I was like, oh, some famous actor played him in a different movie. In in I think the first Guardians. Yeah. And uh and but my seats were so bad that I couldn't make <laughs> out who it was. <laughs> you thought it was Guillermo del Toro. No, I just I was like, who the fuck is that? Um, Chris he looked Pratt. like Crispin Glover as Andy Warhol. <laughs> Chris Pratt was in the animated uh, uh, series called The Batman, playing a character called Jake. <laughs> Search me. Cut. Yeah, sir. Yeah, I did. We, uh, we, he came up, I guess, when we did Jurassic World because that it rang a bell. Right. Um, all right. There was a. Character. I saw the uh, Jurassic uh, trailer. Yeah, me too. That looks rough. Don't care. Yeah. What's going on? I should be I excited about that, and I am not. I don't care, man. Yeah. I, I'll tell you off air the ones I was, because we're going to cover them. Anyway, um, number five, two more to go. Uh, Florence Kasumba, the actress who played one of Black Panther's like generals, uh, She her character's called Ayo. Okay. Um, she was also in Wonder Woman. Oh, uh, playing a senator. So she's getting high universe roles. crossover. Yeah, yeah. Big time. And then I thought you'd love this one. Um, one of Thanos's henchmen, Corvus Glaive. Yep, that's one of those characters that uh, is a Jonathan Hickman character from the Infinity crossover. All right. That's played by an actor named Michael James Shaw. And he was in Constantine. Which is a comic book. Yeah, no, that's 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 a superhero. I mean, yeah, John Papa Constantine Midnight. is in Justice League Dark now. Right, right, right. Papa so Midnight's a legit character too. Well, that's who he played. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah, a col- I love Jonathan. Jonathan Hickman um, is a very fine comic book writer, uh, and he's brilliant at character names. So I, I just a shout out to Jonathan <laughs> Hickman. The henchmen in this movie are Cull Obsidian. Ebony Maw, Proxima Midnight, and That's Corvus Glaive. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Proxima I really Midnight. like Ebony Maw, who dies <laughs> in the movie, and then Thanos has a line like, Maw is dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, okay. So that's Avengers Infinity War. Very fun. We'll see you next year on, uh, yeah. for part two. Yeah.